Smallest things amuse me. You know it's a really small wine producer when they've got their email on there, which is an at yahoo. <laughs> <laughs> that is quite fun. Get a G, get a G. Guys, welcome back to another week of Wine for the People. Yes, I have returned to the studio after a bit of a hiatus, but good to see uh, Henry Hammersley obviously standing and doing an incredible, incredible job. Thank you so much for the feedback as well. Uh, and of course, thank you again, sometimes always, for sorting out the wines for us. They've been doing an incredible job keeping a, a very eclectic mixture of different wines. If you like any of them, you can jump onto their website below and of course jump onto the Discord channel to be able to get a cheeky little discount on any of the wines that we reviewed today. So let's jump into it. I haven't done this in what feels like weeks. I know it doesn't feel like it to you, but I don't think we've done this for like months. More wines, let's get it. It's Monday and I'm thirsty. Wine number one, what a color. Amber, if you could actually, you know, really classify this into any particular, definitely amber. Quite delightful. It's got this like jasmine, nectarine, kind of like a green herbaceousness as well. I actually learned about winemaking the other day. I spoke to Caroline, our head winemaker. I now understand the whole like crushed, then pressed, then juiced and shit. Kind of, I don't know, obviously don't based on what I just said, but it was cool. Sick, that's really cool. I like that a lot. A little bit, I think it's what, uh, I'm gonna write this down, oyster shelly. Um, is what Noah says sometimes. Really, oh, it, to be honest, I was expecting probably something a little bit more funky. This isn't that funky. This is actually pretty crisp, pretty clean, pretty tight. Yeah, maybe a bit of skin contact, thinking Pinot Gris-esque. Maybe Sauvignon Blanc, this pineapple skin thing, this, this Sauvignon Blanc thing. It's got a nice bit of chew to it. Got some like almost Riesling qualities as well. It's got that really nice kind of tart acidity, but that texture really covers that up. It's really interesting. It's got great acid and great citric acid drive, but this cool like oily texture that kind of covers the mouth. It feels like I've just like put wax all over my mouth, but I've then like chugged a shot of lime juice or something like that. It's pretty cool. Really cool wine. Um, want to drink it at temperature, want to drink it a little bit colder, but as a warm white wine sitting in a studio with a dude that I don't really like, pretty drinkable. I'm pretty lucky. I love you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> all right, next wine. A uh, little red wine, seems to be unfiltered, uh, naturally settled. Pretty brooding, pretty dark. Oh, old school. Oh, at least a, mix a mixture. It's got some really great cherry brightness to it, but there's this old school kind of like pruney, figgy, spicy character to it as well. It smells like a fruit tree. That smells vibrant. It's Fuck! Um, oh my god, man, this is gonna take like raspberries, I reckon. Rich, dense, luscious blackberries. Like really, really, really intense blackberries. And it's kind of got this blackberry yogurt thing going on. So it's, it's obviously seen a, um, a little bit of malo and it's sort of like fleshed out and almost in that kind of crewy, crewy level of Beaujolais. It's got some great bright bursting red fruits of like raspberries and strawberries and a bit of a deeper profile like some black cherries like an awesome sinewy tannin and then a bit more of that kind of guts and old school winemaking it's a slightly lighter red it's a little bit soft i wouldn't be surprised if it was like a gamay or something potentially but it doesn't really have the like tartness that some of the gamays that i've had have had I would call this a Goldilocks red wine. Again, a red wine for drinking. Doesn't require food or anything like that. There's no harsh tannins that are sticking out. So I would actually drop around about 40 bucks for this and I'd buy 12. Again, just a really, really great uh, drinking wine with a lot of complexity. That spice on the nose is really quite interesting considering how primary fruited this is. Wine number three, more yellow, really golden. Um, what's that the color of? That is the color of what I imagine British people want their summer girlfriend's hair color to look like because there's no blondes in the UK. Could be orange wine, could just be uh, oxidatively handled white. Smells like an oxidatively handled white with a lot of batonage. So someone's actually stirred this up in barrel. Pineapple, like fresh golden circle tin of pineapples. Someone play the pina colada song. That's really cool. That's really drinkable. It's got this nice little sort of um, citrusy little bump in the middle of it. Doesn't give you the like hard hitting, like ugh. I keep saying acidic white wine. That's not what it is, but like you guys know what I'm talking about when it's like, you drink a glass of white wine, you're like, yum, yum, yum. Oh. It doesn't have any of that oh, on the end, which is an official term. Um, thinking like a Gruner-esque thing. Um, that's, that's the sort of unfortunate thing that happens sometimes when you combine something like skin contact with oxidative handling. Um, a lot of the clarity of the varieties tends to 
uh, become quite clouded or foggy. Could be like a warmer petite bleed from a, a hot year, or it could just be a fun little skin contact wine. Who knows? Uh, but I quite like it. I would grab three bottles, 35 bucks I'd be happy with, but yeah, good little don't worry about how complex it is. Just have a good time with it. I reckon it's great. Third wine here, we've got a red that's actually quite light in body, light in colour and a little bit hazy so it's naturally settled and unfine, unfiltered, that kind of vibe. Cool. Alright, yeah, this is totally a uh, wine I'm going to vibe on. Plenty of carbonic maceration. Like, this is a pure raspberry jam box. Like, this is going to be fun. Shout out to Dad who's watching this. He's like, you never guess the old wines are the old wines because the old wines go slightly brown. This has gone slightly brown, so I reckon there's some age on this one. Um, I, I've used this one before, but it smells, it smells like an expensive wardrobe. Like, really nice oak, but it's got a cool, like, varnish on it that means that moths won't eat it. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Pretty pristine. You have this, like, raspberry leaf tea thing going on. This is Frisbee wine. This is Hacky Sack wine. This is wah this is vortex wine. This is just something you want to drink while you're throwing a ball or some stupid little park-based entertainment. Disc golf wine. Yes, it's a new category. Um, this is like stewed peaches. This is like, uh, it's been cooked on the stove with some sugar and some water and it's just dessert time, baby. This is yum. Good lineup, God. Hope it's not expensive, it could be. It doesn't quite have that same like Apple opening product experience as the last one. So I'm thinking maybe it's more in that like, <sighs> Oppo Samsung range, so maybe 40 bucks. 40 bucks, and it's another dozen. It's another dozen. I'm spending some money that I don't have. Number five. Bit on that yellowy, yellowy vibe. Pretty ripe, stone fruity, bit of nutty element there, kind of cashewy. Smells like uh, dry seaweed. Like, there could be, like, you don't think it actually smells like dead fish, but like, you can convince yourself there's some dead fish in there. Bright, fresh, pristine, a little bit green, a little bit vegetal, not in a bad way, no, in a really, really nice way. I think that sort of CO2 that's jumping out of the glass as I'm swirling this is uh, just adding to those lifted aromatics as well. Yeah, I'm into that. Nice little subtle oxidation there. There's a little of that kind of nutty profile there. Great acid, really interesting. Uh, definitely needs to be a lot colder than it is now to show its true potential. There's a great mineral acid drive as well. And there's almost like a, this little nice phenolic grip as well. I think this is really quite a cool wine, but yeah, that nice cashewy nuttiness is really quite captivating. This is pretty cool. I don't see it as being terribly complex. And for that reason, I probably wouldn't be drop, dropping anywhere north of around about 28 bucks a bottle for it. And I'd probably buy six of these. I thought it was pretty good. Um, that kind of tastes, it, yeah, it's it's not got heaps on the palate, but like that's not a bad thing because sometimes I do want just like that really chilled down would just be a really nice way to, it'd be refreshing, like a refreshing white wine. It's definitely a six for me because like I like being refreshed. It's one of my favorite feelings. It's like sleeping or watching Port Adelaide not lose by a whole pile of points to Hawthorne on the weekend. Um, And the last wine, which definitely looks like it's got even more CO2 in it. And, it, and to be honest, Lockie, look at that. It looks like water. Look how light. So this is this is what we started out at, and this is what we finished with. Bright florals, white nectar in, all of that kind of thing. It's giving that aromatic white profile, you know, Riesling. But I'm not going to guess Riesling because it feels almost too obvious, and I've been wrong so many times when I look at this and smell it and go, yeah, it's Riesling. Goon is what it smells like. It smells like Fruity Lexia. Uh, it won't be, it'll be fancy, but like what Fruity Lexia is trying to imitate is this sort of wine. So I would be surprised if this isn't like either a classic fruity white or a classic dry white or something along those lines, which in my head is gonna be a Pinot Grigio potentially. No, it's kind of a deceptive one. This is really, really well made. This is really, um, it's classically handled, but it's a wine that sort of begs you to look a little bit deeper than just swinging it down. This is a sleeper, a sleeper of a wine. Minerally, it's really clean and crisp. It's almost like, uh, it's the sort of thing that if you were gonna pair it with something, you'd probably pair it with seafood because you want that sort of like tart mineralistic thing going on. Yeah, the acidity is excellent. Like it's, if you wanna know what high acid wine is, that's what this is. It is just through the roof. I think it's just quite a, it's quite a delicious little, yeah, easy drinking little reason. Guys, welcome back. Uh, what did you guys think? Very middle of the road. Nothing was bad, nothing was amazing. That was kind of where I sat. Wrong, it all <laughs> slapped, bro. What were you drinking? That was delicious. Anyway, number one, uh, this honeyed uh, amber type of thing that yeah. was going on here. 
yeah, uh, good fun. I think it was like a little textural reasoning or semi on some kind of textural uh, aromatic variety. Yeah, delicious. I was like oyster jelly, little bit of barrel, skinsy rizzle. Uh, I went twelve. Uh, and $38. I thought it was a pretty penny. I went 38 as well. I went six. I said six for 45. <sighs> Big spender. Yeah. Big I'm spender. all cashed up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, What was this, Lucky? Two, two bucks. Well done. Well done. Well done. Hey, that's good job, <laughs> boys. Good job. <laughs> I'm grabbing 12 with this thing. Hey! Sick! Oh, my ladder. Good dude. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent, yeah, excellent feet. work, mate. That's great. I've seen that label in bottle shops heaps before as well. They're around, aren't they? Yeah, no, so this is Owen Ladder, based out of uh, Ballarat. Um, basically grew up on a winery, was, has been pumping over ferment since the age of like five. Mm. His dad actually broke his leg while he was still in high school <laughs> and had to literally do his like wine making work before going to school and then coming home and then finishing it off. Pretty wow. hectic, so it's in his blood. Uh, but that is one of the most complex and interesting Sauvignon Blancs you can get. Yeah, that's cool. I reckon that's excellent. Yeah, that's that's really, really good. Uh, moving on to the first red of the lineup. Mm. This was, I, I saw it and I had this sort of thought in my head about you know, the look of it, mm. then I smelt it and it was completely blown away. I thought it was really cool. So wild, like, oh my God, yeah, it's yeah. just delicious. Like current yogurt and cumin spice. Yeah, 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 that's better than what I said, so use that, but yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I agree. What's this wine, Lucky? Whoa! Oh, could be a shout for Boge. could be a shout for Beaujolais. What do we got? It's, I'm pretty sure this is it. Le Boisseur. What is Le this? It's really, open. it's like really quite raisiny. Let's see, boss. Can we have a look? Wine. It's a really sick wine. Vin de France, Vin de France. Noir. No. Also, yeah. the fact that it's Vin de France, doesn't that just mean it's from anywhere? Like, I thought that Vin de France meant yeah. it was going to be cheap. It's, it's, bucks. it's not Burgundy. 100% yeah. uh, Pinot, it's just a, sele like a selected parcel of Pinot Noir, uh, macerated uh, and um, uh, uh, matured in very large, big, uh, barrels. Cool. Like that one is barrels. coming home. This is a tribute to Connor. Oh, um, so yeah, obviously tri tributing this one uh, to, to someone special to them. Uh, imported by Lo-Fi. This is actually pretty like for for an importer like Lo-Fi, uh, where this I see some like pretty pretty man. racy, uh, crazy out there wines. Um, this is squeaky yeah. and, and fun. This that's, is a, it's that's actually a really cool wine. wine. Yeah, I as soon as I tasted that, I was like, yeah, this is it. So I'm disappointed that it costs eighty two, but it's worth eighty two dollars. Mm. Next uh, wine on list uh, number three. You were um, saying uh, Golden Circle Pineapple Skins. You thought this is bang. Well? This yeah. is like absolute poo. Pure tropical fruit juice. This doesn't it is legitimately that. Now, isn't that funny how he does that? He's good at that, isn't he? I say it literally every time I do a tasting. I'm like, this smells like something, and no one will tell you what it is. As long as you run back down to the store and bought another sort of cheeky yeah. bit of nostalgia for us to try yeah, here. All right, good, let's, see, let's see what, what we got. Is it? No! Oh, the fuck out of big dog up ya! <laughs> is this like a really ripe Chablis? What? Oh, it could be Shannon. Nah, it's Sheeta. It's, it's, uh, it's oh, some it's Austrian done. shit. This might be some Gruner, some textural Gruner. Uh, this is a blend of Weiss Burgunder and Pinot Blanc. Um, Weiss Burgunder. So it's it's basically a um, tropical. Cigar. It's a. I thought it was either that or it's a. Well, um, Spat Burgunder is Pinot Noir, so Weiss it's Burgunder good. should be Pinot Blanc. Absolutely zero sulfur in this as well. So this really is really squeaky. Yeah. Is that natty as hell? This yeah. is it, like Sheeta is like cool. the pinpoint of oh, okay, like Austrian. A natural wine. Uh, so this is his entry level range. It is seventy five wow. bucks. But that's entry the import level. thing. Yeah. It's sick. His top end stuff is hectic. Mm -hmm. Like it's like one hundred and twenty bucks, and it's really really hectic. All right, wine number four. Uh, fun light red, trousseau-y, pinot-y thing. Yeah. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Smashed out twelve bottles easy on that. Um, one. Yeah, done. Anything uh, carbonically macerated. That's pretty much it. It's been. Like it is a fruit bomb, cool, huh? absolute raspberry cool, huh? juice. So you know how really, we say really that like time. white wine smells a little bit like stone fruit. This smells like stewed stone fruit to me. You know yeah, what right. I mean? Like really interesting, interesting call. So you reckon it could potentially be like a new worldy thing? You reckon it could be? I think it's like new worldy. I thought it was yum. Is what I wrote. So yeah, I, I wrote. Really I wrote fun it. too. Ah, yum and fun. <laughs> yum what, and fun. What would you not want from a yum and fun wine? I, oh, right. I said twelve for forty, but yeah, if it was twenty-five, I'd love that. Yeah. I had fifty-five and twelve. All right. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I thought this was awesome. I just loved it. Damn. I'm lucky. What do we got? Oh, yeah, all right. Fair enough. I'm happy with that. That's I'll pretty bang. Is, that's that's the magical basket range quantity, isn't it? Yeah. 40, exactly. 40 that's the, that was the, uh, the tariff code of forty dollars for everything, and everyone's kind of faced label. Cab that's Mackie. sick. That's that actually really good value. Yeah. Awesome. So yes, yeah, super Cab Mackie. Right, refreshing, delicious. 
really, really cool. Yeah, good wine. As a way, like an entry level into Beaujolais, if you've never tried Beaujolais before, this is a really great way to start. Yeah, that's bangs. I think that's awesome. It's not too hairy. It's not too sort of funky. Yeah. Uh, tannins aren't <laughs> it's crazy in your face, which they often can be. It feels like that's they're in between sick. of like uh, a Beaujolais Village and a Nouveau. It's like ha it's a halfway house between the two. Would you say it's kind of similar? So like the three of us, obviously, you've got like too hairy and too funky. So you're this wine, essentially. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Moving well. right along. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, wine number five. Uh, we started. Do you guys notice a little bit of CO two in these last last? Like, no. Was a, by the time you guys got onto them, not at all. No. Um, was yeah, well, there was. The, I found this one a little bit prickly. Uh, touch prickly. Uh, yeah, I wanted six bottles. I'm happy to pay fifty five bucks for it. Thirty bucks for six. Big spender. What do we got? Okay. That is in that. That is in that Aussie Chardonnay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got what do we got? Basque Rangey Aussie. No. No, absolutely not. Peter yeah. Weiss. Is this Hungarian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck These, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Um, I gotta have a look at the bottle. It's either Hungarian or Austrian. Yeah, Hungarian. Oh, yeah. Have you had yeah. Hungarian wine before? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't had Hungarian There's one. There's a new one for you. There's a new one for you. I love the packaging on that. It just it's pretty for some though. reason it's like Count Dracula. I was literally so, I was, as soon as I saw that label, I'm like, Brendan's got that font tattooed on him somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know where. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, but one day tattooed. I will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like bats need a. Legitimately. Hey, look, I'm vindicated. That's a whole bunch of it's fucking cool. weird, weird varieties and like a lot of shit that I can't understand the label. What oh, 750 oh. mil? <laughs> That's just where my finger was, bro. <laughs> All right, moving on to the last wine. Love this. All about it. Uh, yeah. Classically well made. I think uh, semi on of the highest order. Yeah. Potentially Riesling as well. It's somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah. It's one of those wines that, like, you don't know how good it is. It could be like dirt cheap. It could be like 90 bucks just in a really good vintage made really well. Or it could be something oh. kind of gangster. Mm. It could be Sam. It could be Riesling. It could be from Claire. It could be from fucking German. It Seeing this warm up, anywhere. I reckon German Riesling. <laughs> All right, Lockie, what is, how much has this set me back? <laughs> <laughs> from ah! from from nailing it, Clear Valley Riesling 2021. Ah! See, it's a Clear Valley Riesling, Clear yeah. Valley Riesling. Well done. This is a this is a banging wine. Look, this is a banging. We wine. have found the the Valley Riesling of the year. I honestly think we're going to be finding a bunch of these over the next little while. Bonkers. That's really good. It is really Bonkers. good. That is really really good. There's yep. no doubt about that. It is a very very good value wine. I did say when I was tasting it, like, oh, this is cool. I just don't like it. Like, it's just not. I, I like the sweeter, like, honeyed and shit. That's just sort of like clean, oh. crisp, mineralistic, salty, good with seafood, but like I want something. It's a wine that hurts you. Yeah, and that's that's eventually before. the more you get into wine, like the more you yeah. like things like Nebbiolo with the big tannins and yeah. Riesling with the acid. It's, that's it's, sick. It's the iron fist of a glove. Thing. Well, for me, from uh, nailing it on the first wine to uh, utterly stuffing it on the last wine, that's been a, it's. You know what? A lineup that was more fun than uh, than than we first thought. On it, yeah, it revealed itself to go. Oh, that's actually kind of sick. Mm, like yeah. when we first looked at it, I was like, it kind of in this like unsure. Everything looked pretty typical, yeah. but then as we kind of dived into it, so like, you're untrained. That's why I knew it was sick from day dot. Fuck to off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be here till next week. Bye. See you guys. <laughs>